Good morning again, everyone. You're very welcome this morning to Shiloh Christian Fellowship. Is that on, Tom? Is that working yet? That's it now. I'll see. A couple of people I want to pray for this morning just before we get into God's Word. Uh, for Stephen Burroughs, so some people will know, um, his dad informed us during the week that Stephen had taken a stroke. Uh, now he's home uh, and you know, he's recovering, uh, but we just want to keep, uh, keep Stephen in prayer before God. And we've also been asked by a friend, Tommy, who has been here and given his testimony many times, um, to pray for his son, Tommy, at this time, just with, with what he's going through. So let's pray and we'll pray for God's word as well. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, this morning, before we turn to your word, we ask you, please, to accept our thanks, first and foremost, for uh, the wonderful work that you're already doing in Stephen, Lord, and in the recovery that he is making, Father, from the stroke that he took. We pray, Father, for him that you would draw near in the power of your Holy Spirit and minister to him and that you would heal him in the name of Jesus Christ, that he would be restored, Lord God, to complete wholeness in Jesus' name and also, Lord God, that he would be restored to fellowship with us. Just bless him and bless his family in the name of Jesus Christ, please. And we pray, Father, for our friend Tommy's son, Tommy, that, Lord, you would draw near to him at this time as he goes through what he's going through as he faces his own struggles, Lord, that maybe through all of these, he would look to the faith of his father, that he would look to the Jesus that his father speaks of and sings about, and that he would come to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior, that he would walk in the ways of of the Lord. Father, we pray, please, that you would completely deliver him and set him free, that you would give him newness of life in and through Jesus Christ, your son. Just bless him, Lord, please. And help the whole family there, Lord God, to look to you, the living God, for your grace and your mercies and your help. And so, Father, as we turn again to your word this morning, we pray, Lord, that we would speak the truth. Not just me at the front speaking it, but what you hear, check it for yourself if it is the truth, and then speak it. Because the days that we're living in, Father, are dark days And we need to be the light that we're called to be. We need to be the salt that we're called to be. Pray this morning, Father, if people are offended, that they would take up that offense with you. Lord, in this fellowship, may we ever be true to your word, no matter if the whole world hates us. Even if Christians hate us, Lord, let us stand fast upon the truth of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I was saying last week how demons work to deceive people away from God. They manipulate them to, as Paul says in Romans chapter 1, to exchange the truth of God. And when they're talking about here, when Paul's talking about the truth of God, he is saying that it's the fact that every human being knows that God exists. That's the truth. They know that God exists, but the demons manipulate them to exchange the truth of God, to believe lies which lead them further from God. And as a result of believing satanically inspired, demonically influenced lies, people practice all forms of wickedness. And these wicked influence, you hear these days about YouTube influencers, well, some of them good, some of them maybe not so good, but these wicked, these demonic influencers, they then create powerful, powerful strongholds of deception in people's minds. And so, for example, so powerful are these deceptions that the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans 1, so powerful are these deceptions and these lies that men will lust after men and women will lust after women. And we also know in this day and age that men will want to become women and women will want to become men. These are demonic strongholds in people's minds. You've got to understand that's the reality from the word of God. You, you can say, but I have gay friends. So have I. But nonetheless, they are subject to demonic strongholds. They are counterfeits of what God wanted them to be. 
And so when we see the rise of the fanatical gay rights and the LGBTQIA alphabet people in society or an increase in sexual deviancy or any other form of wickedness, let's not just focus on these groups, but in any other form of wickedness, we must understand, Christian, that behind it all, Satan and his evil, unclean spirits and demons are working, deceiving people into exchanging the truth of God for lies, making these individuals counterfeits of what God intended them to be. And Satan does it. He does all of this just to rob God of glory. However, we must remember that all of these people, those that I've mentioned from the, the gay uh, sections of society, the whole AG, LGBTQIA people, those who are caught up in the most evil and wicked sins, they are casualties of a spiritual warfare. Christians are not called to condemn. We are not called to condemn people. We may not like their lifestyles. We may not agree with the sins that they are caught up in. But we are certainly not called to condemn them. We are called to love people. We are called to speak the truth in love. And to tell others of Jesus. In the hope that they will believe in him. And be set free. Well, having said that. Those within the church. And please hear this Christian. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll make it clear in a moment. Having said that. Those within the church, those who profess to be born again Christians, who promote, who endorse or support these demonic deceptions in any form, they are themselves deceived and are robbing God of glory and have become casualties of war. We have had people in this fellowship who boasted about going to support gay pride because they had gay friends. I've got gay friends, but I'm not going to stand in Belfast when an act of defiance against the living God comes walking past in the streets. We are to speak the truth in love. We are most certainly not here to promote, endorse, or support demonic deceptions because they rob God of glory. And these people have become casualties of the war. Christians who do it, Christians who endorse sin, have become casualties of the war. And so, in these dark days, prior to the return of Jesus, things are going to get worse. We watch our news every week. And every week there's something else happens and we think, oh my goodness, what is going on? The spiritual warfare that we are born again into, it's, it's intensifying and the evidence is palpable. It's all around us. Machete-wielding maniacs killing children. Illegal immigrants and others on their rampage in towns and cities where they have sought refuge, either fighting and killing each other, or they're killing other state citizens. Heavenly armed men running amok in supermarkets, shooting shoppers dead. Wars, rumors of wars, increased violence, rocketing crime rates, protests after protests in universities, on the streets. Many of these protests calling for the annihilation of Israel, suicides, mental illnesses, sexual deviancy, and so, so much confusion in this world. All the indications, all the evidence mentioned, and much more. They are the clear, visible, extreme manifestations of, God's, of Satan's counterfeit kingdom and counterfeit works. They are the manifestation of the God of this world. But remember, Satan is a deceiver. He is a liar. He is the father of lies. He is a murderer from the beginning. And although we can identify the extreme deceptive workings of the demonic, uh, of, of his demonic armies of darkness, we must remember, Christian, Satan the deceiver does most of his evil work in a craftier, more subtly deceptive way. What we see is the visible manifestations of the terrible things are going on there, the blatantly obvious, clear things. What we really need to be aware of is how he works so craftily that we don't even see it coming. Turn please to uh, 1 John 
near the book of Revelation, near the end of the Bible, 1, 1 John chapter 4, and I'm going to read the first six verses. John says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now let me just remind people again this morning. Satan cannot, under any circumstances, Satan cannot create anything good. But he can create counterfeits of all that is good. Understand this this morning. It's, it's key to what I've got to say. Satan can't create anything good. But he can create counterfeits of all that is good. He counterfeits everything of God and he presents them as good. He will even present them as godly. So for example, Satan has a counterfeit kingdom. Just there is, as there is the kingdom of God, there is the kingdom of Satan and of darkness. He has many counterfeit gods. He has counterfeit gospels. He has counterfeit Christs and counterfeit Holy Spirits. He has counterfeit gifts of the Holy Spirit. He has counterfeit teachers and preachers. He has counterfeit Christians. Islam, for example, is a counterfeit of Christianity. False religions are counterfeits of Christianity. What God created as good Satan counterfeits and it's the role of the evil unclean spirits and demons under Satan's command to deceive people. That is Christians and unbelievers alike. He deceives them into believing or accepting counterfeit lies to lead them away from God. And he does all of this just to rob God of glory. These lies that I'm speaking about, these lies are doctrines of demons. They are teachings and practices offering counterfeit truths. And like every counterfeit, they closely resemble the real thing. Listen, Christian, if you're not awake to the spiritual warfare, you are going to be duped by the devil. It's that simple. If you are not aware of how the enemy works, like Sun Tzu says in The Art of War... If you do not know your enemy, you're already beat. You need to waken up and smell the coffee, Christian. This church is at war. This church is at war. And in light of what I've said, let me ask you this morning, and I'm asking you seriously to consider this. Can you be certain that you haven't been duped into believing, accepting, or endorsing one of Satan's counterfeits. Now listen again, he has counterfeit kingdom. He has counterfeit gods. He has counterfeit gospels. He has counterfeit Christs and Holy Spirits. He has counterfeit gifts of the Holy Spirit. He has counterfeit worship, counterfeit truths and doctrines, counterfeit ministers, counterfeit pastors, counterfeit teachers, preachers, and counterfeit Christians. In light of all of that, can you be certain this morning that you haven't been duped into believing, accepting, or endorsing one of Satan's counterfeits? Well, let me put this another way. There are a lot of people who think that when they die, they're going to heaven. But will that be the case? Will it be so if they've been duped, deceived, into believing satanically inspired, demonically 
influenced counterfeits. I've said this many, many times. If people believe a false gospel, they will reap a false salvation. You know, some people may have Christian characteristics. They may have wonderful Christian trappings. They may be absolutely fluent in Christianese. And yet, they're not born again. And sometimes I say this to the Lord. And I have to point the finger at myself when I'm saying it. But sometimes I say to the Lord, Lord, I wish that you would permit me to publicly name people whom I question if they're genuinely saved. They might think they're saved. But I have my doubts. Think about this this morning. Is there someone sitting here and you think you're saved? You think you've believed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? I've said it many times to the Lord. I wish, I wish you would permit me to publicly name people who might question if they're genuinely saved. Now the vast majority that I'm talking about are people on Facebook who put up all their Christian comments and Christianness and their life is no more Christian than I am a Catholic. <laughs> Obviously the Lord won't, and you can all breathe a sigh of relief, the Lord won't permit me to publicly name who I don't think are Christians. Because who am I to judge? It's not my place. In fact, others might, might judge me and question if I'm a Christian. So in this dominion, in this dominion of deepening darkness and satanic counterfeits, how can we protect ourselves from being deceived by the devil and his demons? Well, the Apostle John tells us what to do. He says this, Do not believe every spirit but test the spirits whether they be of God or whether they are of God now you and I know I do drug testing all the time for, for some of the work that I do and I know that I've got to go and get a urine sample and, and you've got to drop it into this thing and it lets me know if it's, what drugs they've got in their system or not as the case may be but there's no such thing as a spiritual litmus paper that you can somehow dip into the piss of a, of a demon and say oh that's definitely a demon that's an evil one there's nothing you can't get that type of thing in life the church doesn't provide that but it does provide a means of knowing do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. And we can be forgiven here for thinking that John is, re is referring to evil spirits. See when he says test the spirits, you could be for th forgiven for thinking, oh he's talking about there how you can tell if it's an evil spirit or unclean spirits and demons. And I suppose in a sense that is what he is doing indirectly. But what John is actually saying is this. The you and I Christian, this is what he's telling us, you and I Christian, we each have a responsibility to examine, to prove, to scrutinize, to be certain if a thing is genuine or not. That is what he is telling us. When he said test the spirits, that is what he is telling us. When John says, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, he is speaking of people and what those people preach teach or say test it and see if it's genuine or not and of course we've already learned that demons use people he even uses cassock vestment wearing people in the church to deceive to mislead and to encourage people to drift away from god satan's counterfeits without any shadow of doubt satan's counterfeits are very often found in the pulpits or they emanate from the pulpits or from Christian small groups. And I'm saying, look, and I've said this many times, you need Christian, whatever church you're in, whether it's in Shiloh or some other church or small groups that you belong to, be careful about what church you belong to. Be careful about what small groups you attend because Satan has his deceivers there working to cause you to drift away from God. And you are responsible 
to examine and to prove, to scrutinize, to be certain if a thing is genuine or not. Satan's counterfeits are everywhere. We can watch some of his more blatant counterfeits on the godless channels, as I call them. I wouldn't go anywhere near them. The godless channels or on social media outlets. But Satan is a liar. He is a deceiver who does most of his evil work in a craftier, more subtly uh, deceptive way. He could be working even this morning and you'll not even be able to discern his voice. Somebody will be saying, for God's sake, is he ever going to shut up? Or, as I said many times, did I turn my oven on too high? I'll need to get out of here as quickly as possible. I'll miss the last song. It, it could be working, and so Sandra's laughing. You know, Sandra, you're guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we, we, we pick up certain things and think it's just us, but a lot of the times it's the enemy at work. Now, I'm not saying there's a demon on, under every stone. I'm not saying every time somebody sneezes they need deliverance from evil spirits. But we need to waken up to the spiritual warfare that we are born again into. Satan is a liar. He is a deceiver who does most of his evil work in a craftier, more subtly deceptive way. We need to be aware, Christian, of our enemy's tactics and how he operates. John tells us to examine if the person who preaches, teaches, guides, or instructs us, examine if they are a true believer. And if they confess that Jesus is God in the flesh. Meaning examine if what they believe is what the Bible says about Jesus. And if they know him as their Lord and Savior. It's not just about what they say they know. But do they really know that they know Jesus? Let me ask you this morning Christian. See before you go out. To talk to other people about Jesus. It's not about getting all your doctrines right. Because nobody gets them all right. But before you go out to talk to other people about Jesus. Do you know that you know Jesus? A counterfeit. A counterfeit will not preach the truth of God's word. But if you don't know God's word. You won't know what's a counterfeit. A counterfeit will not preach the truth of God's word. And neither will they know it to be true for themselves. Theirs is a spirit of antichrist. It is against Christ. It is a false teaching. A counterfeit truth. It is completely abhorrent to the Lord Jesus Christ. These people, these antichrists, they preach or they promote a counterfeit of God's way of salvation. There are churches in this town, I've told you, a classic warring minister in this town who says he does not believe that people need to be born again. Load of our nonsense, he said. I would never speak that to my congregation. In fact, I remember when a couple came to this church from his congregation and they heard the gospel, he says, we have never in 25 years in our church, we have have never heard that we need to be born again. These people preach a false gospel. One that has nothing to do with repentance and the need to be born again through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say it again. If you belong to a church, and I'm speaking specifically this morning to people in, 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 on Facebook and on YouTube, If you belong to a church where you are not being told that you need to be born again, that you are not being told that you need to repent of your sins and put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Lord Jesus Christ alone for salvation, get the hell out of that church because you are sitting under a counterfeit preacher and a counterfeit gospel. However, in his letter to Christians, and he was possibly writing to the churches in, in Asia Minor, which would be modern day Turkey. John encourages them, and it's wonderful to read. He says to them, they are of God. He said, but you are of God. In other words, he's saying, you haven't been duped. Thank God. You haven't been duped by these satanic antichrist counterfeits because he says to them, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. 
And I hear Christians rhyming this off, and I'm going to freak you out this morning. I hear Christians rhyme. This is another one of those Christian verses that people rhyme. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Let me just explain something. Christ being in you is absolutely wonderful. It is beautiful. But do not think for a moment that because Christ is in you or you are in Christ, that you don't need to guard yourself against Satan's ploys. Don't think that because Christ is in you, he's going to do all the work. Because he's not. His, he's saying to you this morning, you have a responsibility also to live as I have asked you to live. If you love me, you will do as I say. And if you do as I say, then you will be guarded against the deceptions and the counterfeits of the devil. Christian, in these perilous times when the spiritual warfare is intensifying, it's important that you and I first examine ourselves to prove. Examine ourselves to scrutinize, to be certain if our faith in Jesus is genuine or not. Because I think there's some people even in this church who think they're saved and they're not. Can you be certain? Can you be sure that you haven't bought into a counterfeit of the devil? Is your faith in Jesus genuine? And I'm talking here that spike in order. Do you remember the, the woman that came and poured the spike in order over Jesus to anoint him for his funeral? And that word spike in order, it means in English, genuine, trustworthy, and unadulterated. It means it's pure. Is your faith in Jesus Genuine. Is your faith in Jesus trustworthy? Is it unadulterated? Is it pure? We must not allow ourselves to be duped by the devil deceiver. Once we've examined ourselves in the light of God's word, because that's the only way, that's the litmus test for the Christian. Once we have examined ourselves in the light of God's word, of who Jesus is and what he has done for us, then we must always examine to prove, scrutinize to be certain if a thing that you are being taught is genuine or not. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Don't take the preacher's word for it. Don't take my word for it. You've got to do what God's word says. You have got to examine for yourself. Because what if I am a casualty of Satan's counterfeits? Christians need to be ever watchful, ever vigilant against Satan's counterfeits. The easiest way of exposing demonic counterfeits is to know the real thing. You've got to know that you know Jesus. You've got to know that you know him. Not that it's here, but it becomes here, a part of your life. You make your homestead in him who is my dwelling place. That is my homestead. I have made my homestead in him. I know Jesus. We must examine ourselves. We must scrutinize everything else under the light of God's word. Listen, the days are going to get darker. And if you haven't woken up to the spiritual warfare, you're either duped already or you're going to be duped. There's no doubt about it. We must examine ourselves and scrutinize everything else under the light of God's word. If we truly know Jesus, then of course we can rejoice in that wonderful truth that John shared. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Christian, genuinely knowing Jesus, genuinely knowing him, the word of God, of course it will protect us from satanically inspired, demonically influenced counterfeits of God's good thing. But we must ever be trusting in the Lord. It's not just a one-off event. And so Christian, if you want to avoid Satan's counterfeits, if you want to avoid being duped, Examine everything. Put everything to the test in the light or under the light of God's word. You've got to know that you know what you believe. You've got to know 
that you know Jesus. Maybe this morning there's someone here or someone watching in and you're not yet a Christian. Well, let me ask you, have you ever, have you ever truly examined to prove, to scrutinize, to be certain if the gospel of Jesus about him coming into the world to save you from sin, have you ever actually checked when, when family members have come to you and spoke to you about Jesus, when people give you a wee track in the street, when you've been driving to Belfast and you see for God so loved the world and, and you start to think about eternal matters or whatever, have you ever actually examined that? Have you ever actually proved, have you ever actually scrutinized it to be certain if the good news of Jesus about him coming into the world to save you from sin is genuine or not. You see, while you continue unbeliever, while you continue to believe the lies of the devil that you don't need to be saved, you are drifting further and further away from God. Unless you obey God, unless you confess your sin, that means agree with God that you are a sinner, unless you repent of your sins, turn around from your sins and turn to the Lord, unless you put your trust in Jesus and in Jesus alone for salvation, you shall perish. That is what the Bible teaches. Don't, please, this morning, unbeliever, don't let the devil deceive you into hell. Don't buy into his counterfeits. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we ask you, please, for those of us who know you and love you, for those of us who know that we know Jesus, that you would help us to be able to understand, Lord, that we still have a responsibility to examine, to prove and scrutinize everything, to be certain that it is of you. Because the enemy was always out there, Lord. He's always out there seeking to deceive us, to get us to buy into his counterfeits and to cause us to drift from you. Lord, please make us a people who are uncompromising in our pursuit of you, who have a genuine spike in our faith a spike in our love genuine trustworthy and unadulterated as we pursue you lord we ask you please that you would help us to bring everything that we hear everything that we know everything that we understand to bring it under the light of your word to check if it be true help us to be a people that test the spirits don't just accept what someone says test it and make sure that it's true. I pray this morning, Father, for others that don't yet know you, that you would help them to understand that in the condition that they remain in, if they die in that state, they will perish for all eternity. Lord, please don't let the devil deceive them into hell. May you, Lord, through the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, shine into their hearts and minds that they might be rescued, saved by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ, your Son. We ask this, please.